Now you all know that I love resin 3D printing and all the crazy things that you can do with these machines, like printing things in an insane amount of detail. However, one issue that remains is trying to print technical geometric objects and not having them warp or having uh, pockets or things that you need to sand down from supports that could impact the overall structure and quality of your technical file. And I saw a post by Hugh Evans over on one of Elegoo's Facebook groups who's trying to tackle this exact issue with something that they're calling continuous supports. And how they're going about doing this is by 3D modeling an actual support beam for the object that they're trying to 3D print, which is a really interesting way of going about this. And it has a really thin contact point against the actual object that you're printing. So it's a 0.2 millimeter contact area all along one continuous support piece. And to give you a little bit of clarification of where this really is gonna be most useful, isn't for your figurines or statues or anything like that that have lots of little tiny micro details. This type of support functionality, I don't think would really be applicable to this. You're still gonna to wanna to use your standard uh, support options that you might find in Lychee or Cheetubox that you can just generate through those slicers. However, one area where it will be really helpful is with the bases of your 3D prints. And we've taken a look at one of the recent prints that I did of Dante Zuck for this Dark Souls bust. It's a great example of where the mixed support options might be applicable for something like this statue here, where for the main body, your standard supports are probably gonna be the most applicable here. However, for the base, it's a really flat geometric shape that we need to further support. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's little divots in this, not just from the supports, but from where there weren't supports, not to mention that you're gonna see lots of little pocket holes there where we're gonna to have to end up either sanding that down or filling those out, something along those lines. And I ended up reaching out to Hugh Evans to get a set of those files that we can run off and print for ourselves and see how they actually work and hold up. And then more importantly, we can also test those against the standard way of supporting files, as well as checking out an alternative option that you might not even be aware of that's available in Lychee Slicer. So the set of files from Hugh Evans ended up taking about an hour to print over on the Mars 4 Ultra and the prints themselves look really good. I mean, I'm expecting those to look fairly good, but what we're really interested in is how these supports work. And the first thing I'm immediately noticing is, yeah, they printed with very minimal support contact area at all, which kind of impressed me, but I can also see a very thin layer of contact between the actual support file that they created, that continuous support, and the object itself. So if I hold it up to light, I can actually see through that little seam there that we're gonna end up breaking off to reveal our print. You'll also notice for each of the files that Hugh Evans also ended up creating supports for the supports, which I thought was kind of funny. I mean, one alternative way to to do this is if you knew the orientation of the file and how you were gonna print it, you could generate those supports uh, in that correct orientation, and then you wouldn't have to worry about any sort of additional supports for your supports in theory. So here are the files. Uh, I've got two sets of the exact same set of files here. So I'm gonna leave one as is. And what I wanted to do with one of these sets here is just try to remove the manually placed supports that they put on there and actually might need snipping shears here just to go through and separate the actual print and the supports from the continuous support so we can take a look at that itself before trying to remove the full on support. All right, let's see how this goes. I've got the support, uh, the support for the supports removed. And then here's our part. This is the manually continuous support there that was generated in their CAD tool. And I'm just gonna try and flex this. Oh, that's like a, that's so thin. That's awesome. That's really clean. That just gave a really clean, smooth edge to that print. This time, I don't even think I'm gonna bother removing the support. I'll just remove these few that are there. I'm just gonna try and flex this off. Oh my gosh, that is, oh no. Yeah, the print kind of pulled. It probably still needs a little bit of cleanup there with an X-Acto knife. All right, here's the last piece. And then I'm just kind of peeling this off. The connection there is so thin to the part and it just kind of snaps away. So again, not entirely, like it's not a perfect seam, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good where that, that contact was. And I bet you if, uh, there, there might be like an even cleaner way to separate these potentially, but overall that was a 
pretty, pretty clean looking seam from this continuous support there. And here's the traditional way of creating supports that I went in Lychee and supported these uh, using auto and manual functionality within Lychee and using primarily the light supports and not as easy <laughs> to break away. I probably could have made the contact shape a little bit smaller and I've already busted up part of the print here. By the way, the reason why I'm not heating these up is because they're so small. I didn't wanna further warp the prints themselves. Not bad with the manual, but it's again, a little bit of scarring and uh, pocket marks there that we're gonna see. And I'm just gonna do this for the other prints and we'll eventually do a compare of all of them. Now, for those of you like myself that do not have very good 3D modeling skills whatsoever to create your own continuous supports, there's actually a function in Lychee Slicer that they've recently added called inline supports. So after you've brought in your model, have everything oriented the way that you need to, once you go in to start placing your supports, there is an inline option. This is part of the pro subscription as well for Lychee, and it's gonna allow you to place a set of rows of supports. And depending on how far the spacing is between those, and I think the lowest is 0.5 millimeter. So you can create some pretty thin and close supports that mimic this continuous support methodology there that Hugh Evans is working on. It's not gonna be probably as exact because there's gonna be some continual gapping there and you'll potentially still have those pockets that we're gonna have to deal with from the supports. But this might be a good alternative for some of you out there like myself. And here are the cleaned up prints and I can immediately tell you that these are more closely on the prints than the others. Ooh, look at that. That's actually breaking away pretty good. Uh, still a good amount of cleanup that I'm gonna have to do there. It's like a, it's not a perfect tear away like I was hoping. It's definitely creating a wall. Oh yeah, that's not great. Okay, I mean this it, it works. I think I'm breaking the print more than I'm I mean, it's not, it's again, not horrible, not horrible, but I, I've definitely broken the print in a few spots. <laughs> and before we take a look at the results of all of our different prints, I did want to say a thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Mars 4 and the Mars 4 Ultra that I used in the prints for today's video. You can also find more information on the new Elegoo Saturn 3 and the Saturn 3 Ultra, as well as their new fast FDM3 printers, the Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro. If you're interested in more information about any of Elgoo's new products, you can definitely find links to those down below. I have to say Hugh Evans' option of the continuous supports, I think was probably the best option when it comes to not damaging the file or leaving scarring or pocket marks or anything like that. They also broke away fairly easily here. And if you're considering using the inline support option in Lychee, I would consider taking a look at the depth option for the tip as well as that diameter to try and reduce those as much as possible because you have so many of those supports next together stacked together and it's going to make it easier the smaller that contact area is to break the part away from the print. And by the way, yeah, the, the traditional way left the most pocket scarring issues with just removing the overall supports. It's definitely the messiest option. It would require more sanding and smoothing and filling for these technical objects here. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon and let me know what you guys think about Hugh Evans' approach to this continuous support methodology. I think this would honestly be pretty cool as a feature if it eventually ended up into something like Lychee Slicer where you could just go in there and paint a line along an edge and have it auto-generate that versus you drawing some inline supports and trying to figure out all that. His option was still the cleaner option in my opinion when it came to breaking these away. It wasn't perfect, but it's certainly a step in the right direction, I think, to help trying to solve this issue of printing these geometric technical objects that people tend to struggle with when it comes to resin 3D printing. Oh, another great use case for this to test this out on your own is trying to print your own set of dice for miniature games using some of these support options that I showed off here in today's video. Hey, thanks so much for watching all and I'll see you next time.
And I completely forgot to tell you guys about how I broke the Mars 4 Ultra prototype that I have access to here. Yeah, I ended up getting resin stuck inside of this bolt holder here and snapped the bolt in half. So if I lift out the vat, one half of the bolt is stuck there inside of the printer until I can get Elugu to replace this for me or until I can somehow get this out of here. But yeah, I just thought this was amusing that I managed to break yet another 3D printer here. <laughs> Good times.